<laughs> All right, I'm testing out my face tracking technology that my camera does. Oh, whoa, okay. It's following me, it sees everything I do. Um, but anyways, what I'm doing today, oh, this is creepy. I have emptied everything out of my van, and today I want to pack everything back up. I can't quite do what I want to do with my batteries yet because I don't have the wires, but um, check this out. Man, I feel like it frames me weird. Like, I kind of want to be off to the side. Why am I so fucking weird? So, I was gifted uh, this battery, which is the same battery that I got. So, I've expanded my storage of energy, and I got gifted this panel <clears throat> so I can uh, add it to my existing solar system and <clears throat> here is my solar setup right now I have one battery there and I now have another battery so I want to add that one to this one but that spot doesn't have room so I'm probably gonna move it right there to where this drone is and my dad by the way by the way, this is my father. This is his ashes. Um, and that's a story for another day. But I carry him with me. And I spread him around the country to places that I go. Um, these were, all these things on here were painted by his grandchildren. Because we didn't find an urn that was really suiting for him. And uh, so we decided to let them paint it. And yeah, that was a long time ago. Okay, back to this. I have the drone. I'm gonna move that real quick. And this is where I want to put the batteries. Which is convenient because the wires from the solar panel go right there, but currently they go through the wall, and then they go through that wall to get to the charge controller. Which is here. That's the charge controller. So and it's breaking through the second wall. Comes right there, and then these wires there's four sets there, two from the panels and two that go back into that hole and go down to that single battery that I have. So instead of doing all that, it'll come right from here. The charge controller I will move to right there and then they'll come back out into the batteries because that means I'm using less wire and, <laughs> and that's less resistance going into the batteries. So I'm losing energy the longer my wires are. But my holdup for installing these wonderful gifts that I have here is the fact that I need a set of battery cables, thick wire, to connect the batteries together. And I need to get the brackets and the adhesive to attach this to the roof. And I will get those things, uh, I'm just waiting on Bank of America to, to come through for me. Man, that was a whole lot of explaining to avoid doing some work. But anyways, yeah, I'm gonna try to repack the van right now. And you see I got some stuff in here. Got two drums, which I don't even really need that thing anymore. I should find a new home for that. Fishing pole, I've debated on so many times and getting rid of it because, you know, it takes up space and it packs weird, but it's fishing, so. Um, my beautifully donated drill, that stupid battery pack I had to ride a scooter to go get. I've got some bleach there to clean out my water tank, uh, sawzall, and uh, a lot of clothes. And this weird desk that I got here. Um, but then underneath that is a pile of clothes that I need to organize and um, figure out if I'm keeping it or getting rid of it. And then, of course, my kitchen. This is actually how I prefer to camp. And I mean, not right here in the city in a driveway, but uh, I prefer to have all my stuff out like this as opposed to being all packed up in there. That's what I was expecting to be doing when I left in the van, is to be able to have everything out and have it all, you know, outside of the van and have my space. But as they say, you know, humans plan and the universe laughs so now I finally get to pull everything out and try to reorganize everything it'll take me a minute but uh let's let's do this okay so first things first I think I need to start a garbage pile you know honestly really what I need is a closet so I have a spot to put all my clothes um, and I'll have to figure out a creative solution to that because here is where I want to put my batteries. And then over here is where I've been storing my clothes, but it just ends up in a pile of bags that is endless. It's still a bit of a mess, but I'm getting there. I really just don't have enough storage.
It's hot out here, man. Um, not as hot as other parts of LA, but I'm sweating. It's, it's break time. 86 degrees. It was 10 degrees cooler in Long Beach. Um, but I lost that spot, so yay. Hashtag van life. Okay guys, now it's day two, and I had almost uh, gotten pretty much everything reorganized in my van without adding that second battery, but today I got donated battery terminal cables, so now I can hook that battery up. So that's what I'm about to do. Check this out. So I had started to reorganize everything over here, and I had said that I wanted to move that battery to this spot um, with the second battery there. So. I got to unorganize all this and move that battery and basically redo my entire solar system and unhook it and move these cables and move my inverter or I'm sorry not my inverter but move my charge controller because right now it's in this spot which is essentially underneath my television so I can see what's going on and I'm going to move it boop, 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 right there underneath that thing that's the temperature right now it's 93 here in the area but I'm going to put it right there underneath that and uh, um, my wires will be shorter. It won't have to reach as far, which means less resistance and I won't be losing as much power from the panels. And for those of you who don't know, I have uh, solar panels right here mounted on the top of my van and it's a 250 watt 18 volt panel and the wires on this panel go from the panel down to that charge controller. So they go through the roof up there. And they run down here, which they're not pretty right now, but I'm about to fix them. Through the first wall, through the second wall, and into my charge controller. And then it comes back out of my charge controller, through a hole down there. Then in my battery right there. So the charge controller is basically just a switch between my panel and my battery. But it's an automatic switch, right? So. Uh, if my battery's full and it's daytime, you don't want your battery to keep getting a charge. So that charge controller will not only make sure it's getting the right charge into the type of battery it is, but it also uh, uh, turns off the power once the battery's full and it just lets it float charge. And then from my battery, I have wires that go into the 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter. And getting that pure sine wave is kind of important, especially if you're gonna be charging things with an external battery, like a phone or a tablet or a laptop. Um, you want pure sine wave going into your external batteries. If you're not gonna be charging anything off of it, if you're just running televisions or even like a drill, um, but if you're gonna be charging off of your inverter, you want pure sine wave inverter. If you're gonna be charging devices with an external battery, a speaker, anything like that. If you don't have a pure sine wave inverter, you're going to shorten the life of that battery every time you plug it in until eventually, eventually the battery won't work anymore. Um, I had a laptop I did that to where I ran it off a square wave inverter for too long, like one of those cheap ones you get from the truck stop, and uh, eventually it wouldn't run unless it was plugged in. It was like a hundred bucks to replace the battery, which I didn't have. So um, those cheap inverters from the truck stops, be weary of those. Make sure you get a pure sine wave. You can even find them at Harbor Freight, so fun fact. But this one is a Renergy, and uh, I like it. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do, um, since I actually do have my inverter running right now, I'm going to turn that off and make sure that it's not pulling any juice from anything. Um, I do have some backup battery backpacks if I need to use it while I'm doing this, but it's all right. And then I'm going to get all this mess of accords out of the way because I don't want to work in an environment like this. So I have cords going to computers and cords going to battery packs and I've got cords set up for laptops running along this wall. Um, you guys saw me the last time I reorganized all this and it needs reorganizing again. Cord management is not my strong suit. Um, but uh, I'm going to unhook all the power from there and move that thing first. Okay, so what I just did is I unhooked the solar panels first first the positive and then the negative and now I know that there's no juice coming into the system because the panels are unhooked these wires are going down to the battery and that's what I'm gonna unhook next now when you do these and you unhook them you don't want to let the positive and the negatives touch otherwise you can start a fire um, you might even wrap them in electrical tape which I'm not gonna worry about that because a I don't have any and B I'm gonna be careful but as you can see I have them all unhooked now I'm gonna unscrew this I'm going to unscrew my charge controller and move it up here.
Ta-da! Oh. Yep, that's a switch. There's a switch. Uh, yeah, whatever. Ta-da! I got it unhooked. All right, time to put it where I want it to go. Right there. Yeah? I think so. I don't know how well you can see. Re-angle this. Can I zoom in? Oh! It's better, isn't it? All right. And the wires will be right. I'll make a hole right here for the wires to go in and out. Yeah, I think that'll work. Right. Sometimes, I mean, you could pay someone to do all this, but sometimes you just gotta do it yourself, man. Like out of necessity, because to pay someone to do all this would be too expensive. And the only reason I know how to do it is out of necessity. I had to learn it because I couldn't afford to pay someone to do it. That's why I've had to learn most of the stuff I know is because I'm poor. Yeah, I like it. And then this still fits up here on its little hook, 91 degrees. Now, to hook everything up. Okay, once you unhook the solar panels from the charge controller, there's still energy in the system. So I'm gonna unhook the battery. I gotta pull it out of here and then I'm gonna unhook it. Everything's turned off. Part of the reason I want to move it, too, is because where this is batteries at, it's really hard to get to. Ta-da! Batteries out. But that is, as you can see, I got the two thicker cables going to my inverter. Um, that provides the power to that. They need to be thicker because of how much juice is going through. And then the smaller wires that you see here are from my uh, charge controller. Okay, I got all the wires unhooked. Um, and now I'm gonna move the battery to over here in its new location. Abracadabra. Turder. And now, I'm gonna come over here. Time to hook the second battery up. <laughs> but first. Hmm. And my time in LA has been interesting so far. I am looking forward to getting back onto the road. My van's gonna have an awesome setup with a good solar array. Most of this was made possible because of you guys. You guys are making my solar system possible. The followers I have, Chuck, big shout out to you for donating the battery, the new solar panel that I have. Man, I'm, thank you so much. And if you're interested in helping support me, my links are in the description of this video. In fact, they're in the description of pretty much all my videos. Um, if you got five on it, anything helps. And if you can't donate, if you can't contribute, that's fine. Just hit share, hit like, hit follow, hit subscribe. All those things, all the social media. Do it, do it, right now. I'll wait, I'm waiting. Won't wait forever, because I gotta finish filming this video. But you should do it, thanks. Let's take a look at what we got here. This is all your safety precautions and installation instructions. You may want to save this. It'll give the voltage that your battery needs to be charged at. Let's see if I can do it. This is an AGM battery. It's, a, it's still a lead acid battery. It has battery acid in it, but it's a sealed system. If you don't have it, an AGM, if you just have a lead acid or a flooded battery, uh, you're gonna have to vent whatever space that you put it in. Um, but we won't have to vent these because they're sealed. They're maintenance-free batteries. Your gels and your lithium ions are also gonna be maintenance-free batteries. All right, I got them in here. Now, as you can see, they're two different brands, right? 
but they can be hooked together because the chemistry on them is the same, meaning these are both AGM batteries, the amp hours are the same, and the cell count is the same. Um, they're identical in every way, they're just two different brands. Um, and you gotta make sure all that's right. If you're not sure, then just buy the same brand. But these are um, able to be hooked together because they everything's the same. Now that's always the big question, isn't it? How to hook these two batteries together so it's safe for your solar system. And when you're hooking two batteries together, since there's so much power going through those, you want to use real thick battery cables like you would get AutoZone. I got these at Harbor Freight. Um, but you want them to be thick. You don't want to use thin wires to hook two batteries together. What would happen is there's so much resistance going on there that uh, they would probably end up melting the rubber housing around them, starting a fire. You don't want that. Use big, thick cables to hook two batteries together. You also want thick cables going between your batteries and your inverter and it's turning this DC power into AC power like you would use in your house. So, um, the inverter and then hooking batteries together. Real thick cables. Obviously red is positive, <clears throat> black is negative. Both colors are also on the batteries themselves. Um, what I'm going to be doing is wiring these up. Um, both, basically, both of these batteries are 12 volts. And I want to keep it at 12 volts. So in order to hook these together and keep the voltage at 12 volts, um, you want to hook them together in parallel. So as you can see here, I have the black wire hooked to the negative on one and the negative on the other, and the red wire hooked on the positive on one and the positive on the other. And when you bust out your handy dandy voltmeter, ta-da, uh, it tells you that it's still 12 volts. And that's what I want. If I wanted 24 volts, I would hook it up differently. If I had two 6 volt batteries and I wanted to make 12 volts, I would hook it up differently. But since both of these are 12 volt batteries, this is how I want to hook it up. So now what I have is two 12 volt batteries, both 100 amp hours, hooked together in parallel, making 200 amp hours of energy. So I have twice as much energy to store throughout the night. And while the batteries are charging, I can still run my electronics during the day um, without putting too much of a drain on that system. Okay, well it's getting a little late, so uh, I just went ahead and uh, pumped this out real quick. So basically, what I have here is both of my batteries hooked up to each other, negative, negative, positive to positive to maintain the 12 volts. And then I have the smaller wires here, which I haven't cleaned up yet. They are coming from my charge controller, which is providing energy from the panels. Currently it's working. Everything is being charged and everything. I need to do a little wire management, um, but this will all attach to the, to the wall there and it'll look much cleaner. As you can see here, it says panels, battery, and this is telling me that my system is working. The panels are currently flashing because they're charging the battery. The battery's not full, so it's solid. I believe that's the right color. Green, tell me if it's not green, please, because I'm blue-green colorblind, but I'm pretty sure that's green. If it's blue, it thinks it's lithium ion. I don't know why that would happen. So I'm just trusting that's green. In case you are colorblind like me, you can also Bluetooth into it, which this is also telling me that my system's working. The next thing I gotta do is hook up my inverter. Now the inverter, which I have a Renergy 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, you're gonna want it to say pure sine wave. Um, it's what takes the power from the batteries, which is DC powered direct current, and changes it internally into alternating current 120 volts. So you can plug in household appliances or anything with this kind of plug. In order to, to attach this to the battery, which like I said earlier, you need big thick cables like I got here, I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the wall here. Two of them, one for positive, one for negative, and uh, attach to the batteries. ka -chow! Just like that. They go all the way through. <clears throat> I'll be able to run the wires from the inverter to the battery box. Just like that, boom. And now the wires are coming out of there from the inverter. ka -chow. Okay, so now everything's hooked up, um, except for the inverter. 
and I'm getting some bad lighting here because of the time of day, but uh, doing the best I can. Sorry. Anyways, wires from the inverter coming out of there. I've got to hook them to the battery system, these two batteries here. And when I'm all done with that, I'm going to end up building a box to cover this all up so it's not just all exposed. Oh, I had to give it a few minutes because it's getting hot and I had to let the shade come over here. But um, I'm going to go back to this right now. Okay, so when you're hooking up the inverter, basically since we have two batteries here instead of just one, if you just had one battery, all you'd have to do is hook the negative to the negative and the positive to the positive and you'd be done. But I have two cells here. So what I'm gonna have to do is hook the negative on one and the positive on the other. That's how you hook it up with two batteries. If I had three batteries, I would put the third battery in the center. So that way the, the power of the positive is coming to the farthest battery and the negative is the closest. You always want those to be hooked up on the outside of the cells, however you have them daisy chained together. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. All right, there we go. That wire right there is going, the double wire is going to the inverter. And on the other battery, that double wire is going to the inverter. And the final test to see if everything's hooked up right is to turn the inverter on. So pray that we don't blow a fuse. Hey, yay. I know it's tucked in there kind of weird, but uh, I did that on purpose. I'm eventually gonna cut out a hole right there and have it coming out the wall. Everything's charging, everything's hooked up right. Now I've got 200 amp hours instead of 100 amp hours. But thanks for being here. I'm gonna do some cord management and get this all pretty. Appreciate everyone's help with this, who did help. And if you have any questions, hit me up. And as always, miles of smiles.